The road to Indianapolis and the 2006 NCAA Men's Basketball Final Four was as unpredictable a journey as anyone could have ever imagined. For the first time since 1980, the Final Four did not feature a single number one seed in the bunch, all knocked out by upstarts and upsets. And Northwestern State has upset Iowa. And a giant killing Cinderella named George. When the dust finally settled at the RCA Dome, an unlikely champion was crowned. The Florida Gators captured their first ever NCAA Men's Basketball Championship, beating the UCLA Bruins 73-57. As good as it gets, Florida's the national champion. This impressive performance was led by a bunch of super sophomores, including the tournament's most outstanding player, Joachim Noah. The son of former French Open tennis champion Yannick Noah, Joe Kim served notice with a championship game record, six block shots to go along with 16 points. The pass and Noah with another block. What a story that's been all tournament long. The Florida Gators took a big bite out of college basketball's biggest stage with a dominating performance for the ages. Welcome to the 2006 NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Championship. Welcome to Gator Glory. As the field of 65 was announced, it was apparent that the Duke Blue Devils were going to be the team to beat. The tournament's overall number one seed, the top seed in the Atlanta region, was slated to play the first and second round games in Greensboro, North Carolina, only 50 miles from Duke's Durham campus. The other three number one seeds were the Memphis Tigers in the Oakland bracket, the Villanova Wildcats in the Minneapolis region, and the Connecticut Huskies in the Washington, D.C. region. While all of the number one seeds were huge favorites heading into their first round matchups, all of them had trouble getting out of the gates. In the modern era of the NCAA tournament, no number 16 seed had ever beaten a one seed. Could it happen? In the Atlanta region, the Duke Blue Devils were riding high after winning the ACC tournament and were expected to walk all over the 16th seeded Southern Jaguars, the champions of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. The team from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, hung tough all the way into the second half and cut the Duke lead to 40-37 with 16 minutes to play. All-America Sheldon Williams and J.J. Redick accounted for 58 of Duke's 70 points, and the Blue Devils pulled away with a 16-4 run late in the second half, winning by 16, 70-54. The number one seed in the Minneapolis region, the Villanova Wildcats, enjoyed a virtual home game at the Wachovia Center in Philadelphia. Villanova came out flat, and the pesky Monmouth Hawks, champions of the Northeast Conference, were playing with confidence after beating Hampton in the play-in game three days earlier. And puts it away. Villanova guard Alan Ray, back from an eye injury, helped Villanova shake off its sluggish start and regain its form in the second half. Then the Wildcats began to cruise. Monmouth may have earned some respect, but Jay Wright's squad moves on to the second round with a 58-45 win. Most critics expected the Memphis Tigers to have their share of problems with the Titans from Oral Roberts, the champions of the Mid-Continent Conference, and the 16 seed took it to the Tigers. Oral Roberts senior Larry Owens hit this circus shot and gave the Titans an early lead. But as the first half wore on, it was apparent that Memphis was clearly the better team, and the number one seed in the Oakland bracket used their swarming defense to extend their lead at halftime and never look back. In the D.C. region, the number one seeded Yukon Huskies had perhaps the most trouble of all the top seeds going against the University of Albany Great Danes. In the first half, Albany looked like the beast of the America East Conference and played like the top dogs in this game. 
Albany, just two years ago, was suffering through a 5-23 season. Now it was extending its lead to 12 points into the second half. Mar Wilson back to Zomer in the dunk in rough three. Coach Will Brown had his team on the verge of an historic upset. But it was UConn point guard Marcus Williams who emerged as the leader for the Huskies with his season high 21 points, king a 20 to 4 UConn run, and the Big East regular season champions survived with a hard fought 72 59 victory. Stay together, stay composed, okay? And just chip away and take your shots at them. They're gonna make some runs, we're gonna make some runs. Keep your composure, stay patient. We're not gonna win the game in the first minute, we're not gonna lose the game in the first minute, okay? And you know what? All these guys, they get a lot more pub than you do. Everybody knows who they are, nobody knows who you are, nobody knows who Somerville is, they don't know who Bennett is, they don't know you played in Kansas for a couple years in nowhere, Kansas. JJ, they can't pronounce your name. Rush doesn't care who you are. He doesn't respect you. They don't respect you. They don't respect us. Hey, hey, tonight, tonight, they don't know who you are. They don't know who Bradley is. By the end of this night, I want them to be able to spell Somerville, spell twice, say twice, and know who the hell Bradley is. Let's go! Fired up coming out of the locker room, the Braves served notice that they would not back down from Kansas. Well, they are clever, huh? Nice read, nice slip. But Kansas's Sasha Khan kept the Jayhawks close. Sasha Khan slams it all. Up seven toward the end of the first half, junior Will Franklin banked in this shot, hurt round Detroit, and Bradley went in the locker room, up 10 points, 37-27. Oh my, Will Franklin! with a long three-pointer up the window as Bradley shoots the lead up to 10. Bradley started the second half hot as well, and senior Marcellus Somerville's three-pointer kept the lead in double digits. Kansas cranked up the D, cutting the lead down to two with under two minutes to play. But it wasn't enough as Bradley forced the young Jayhawks into the last of their 18 turnovers. And the Bradley Braves came away with the stunning upset. Bradley has upset Kansas, 77-73. A 13 beating a four in the Oakland Regional. The Bradley Braves get it done as Kansas checks out in the first round for the second straight year. Once again, defense prevails. They did a phenomenal job shutting down the Kansas team when they needed to. The Bradley upset was one of many Cinderella and near Cinderella stories of the first round. In the near miss category, the DC region's number two team, the Tennessee Volunteers, battled the 15th seeded Winthrop Eagles all game long and found themselves deadlocked at 61. Bradshaw to inbound. Lofton for the win. Oh! My goodness! It's a two-point shot. Where did he get the courage to take that shot? Chris Lofton's miraculous shot was pure magic for the Vols, who came out of round one alive with a 63-61 victory. An intriguing matchup in the Minneapolis region pitted the fourth-seeded Boston College Eagles against the champions of the Big West Conference, the 13th-seeded Pacific Tigers. Big West Player of the Year Christian Mareker was a force early, hitting from all over the court. Uncontested slam. The two teams matched shot for shot throughout the second half, and with 10 seconds left, it was Mareker who buried this three to send the game to overtime. The game remained tied after the first extra session, but in the second OT, it was the strength of BC, which eventually wore down Pacific, and the number four seed in the Minneapolis region pulled away, albeit in two overtimes, winning 88-76. The two biggest upsets of the first round came at the expense of teams from the Big Ten. 
The Michigan State Spartans, a Final Four team a year ago, faced off against George Mason, champions of the Colonial Athletic Association. The Spartans got off early, thanks to Maurice Ager on the break. But the Patriots took command of this game late in the first half, behind Will Thomas's 18 points and 14 rebounds. Hot shooting Folloran Campbell was the difference in the second half and hit all eight of his shots on the day. George Mason pulls off the upset. The Patriots get their first win ever in NCAA tournament history as they defeat Michigan State, the number six seed and a final four team from a year ago. Well, Our final, George Mason 75, Michigan State 65. Like Bradley, George Mason quiets its critics and another mid-major moves on to the second round. The Iowa Hawkeyes were next on the hit list. The Big Ten tournament champions were on cruise control in the second half against the Northwestern State Demons, leading by as many as 17 points. But the champions of the Southland Conference never quit. Three on two. Lee. Yes! How about that run? Very unselfish, and that's his game. And clawed their way back into the game. On the floor, picked up by Northwestern. In the corner, 4-3. Yes! The team from Nacogdoches, Louisiana, found themselves down by only two with just 15 seconds left. Northwestern State with a two-point deficit. Right side, Forges pulls up for three. It's no good. Battle for the rebound in the corner. Pulled up by Wallace with two seconds left. Three ball on the way. He got it! Oh! He got it! 0.5 seconds to go. Iowa inbounds. Aluska front court puts up a shot at the buzzer. It's no good. And Northwestern State has done it. Northwestern State has upset Iowa. Yes, indeed, today Cinderella is wearing purple to the big dance. The LSU Tigers, the four seed in the Atlanta region, thought by many to be a dark horse to get to the Final Four in Indianapolis, had a tough second round matchup against the 12th seeded Aggies of Texas A&M, who shocked the world in their first round upset of Syracuse. It was Glenn Big Baby Davis who lived up to his billing early. The SEC Player of the Year was unstoppable around the basket. A&M had not been to the big dance in nearly 20 years and was not about to go down without a fight. This tip-in tied the game at 29, heading into halftime. Kowalowska's counted, took it out of the air. The lead changed hands throughout the second half. How about that play by Davis? How about that play? And A.C. Law's jumper gave Texas A&M the lead with 19 seconds yes. remaining. It's a two. LSU's lone senior, Daryl Mitchell, stepped up for the Tigers and hit the game winner. On his own from way downtown, Helden from St. Martinville, Louisiana, the silent assassin with 3.9 left. They did not allow him to get it. It's Josh Carter. Loose ball. Tigers have it, and they're on their way to the Sweet 16. The big baby and his LSU buddies are now heading to Atlanta and the Sweet 16 for a date with the Duke Blue Devils. This is another opportunity. And remember, hey, there's no tomorrow. Give it all you got. Lay it on the line tonight. Let's, Let's go. go. Baby. Come on. Come on, man. Let's hey. go. Hey, this is another step on the road to respect. I can feel it. They don't respect you. That coach doesn't respect us, okay? They think they're walking into next week. They ain't walking anywhere, okay? Get into there right from the get-go. 40 minutes, get after them, leave it all on the court. Defense, one, two, three. Defense. The Bradley Braves, fresh off the upset over Kansas two days earlier, had no time to celebrate with the fifth-seeded Pitt Panthers looming large on the horizon. 
The strong and talented Big East squad seemed confident that they would be able to put an end to this Cinderella fairy tale. Bradley came out hot from the field and was playing with a purpose, rattling the Panthers early. Levance Fields kept Pitt close and cut the Bradley lead to one point at the half, 30 to 29. The second half was all Bradley and seven foot sophomore Patrick O'Brien was a force inside, scoring 28 points and grabbing seven rebounds. Senior Tony Bennett's jumper gave Bradley a 14 point lead, 53 39, and the Braves never looked back. The surprising upset victory against Pitt catapulted the Bradley Braves to their first trip to the Sweet 16 in over 50 years. The Washington DC's number two seeded Tennessee Volunteers were still reeling after narrowly escaping in the first round. Yet another team from the Missouri Valley Conference, the Wichita State Shockers, was in good position for the upset. Kuznov with three and now a chance to take a lead. Wichita State led by five at halftime, but the Vols came back to take the lead themselves with under five minutes left in the game. The Missouri Valley Conference regular season champs still had some shock value left, and this three by P.J. Quisnard gave Wichita State the lead for good. Not a lot of time. It's intercepted! And Kuznard's got it! Inside to move! Wichita State is going to the Sweet 16! Can you believe it? Last year's national champions, the third seed at North Carolina Tar Heels, knew they would be in for a battle as another Cinderella had its sights set on the Sweet 16. This time, the George Mason Patriots had that look in their eyes. All the praying in the world didn't help the Patriots as the Tar Heels and freshman Tyler Hansbro rolled up a 16-2 lead to open the game. Trailing by seven at the intermission, the Patriots, seated 11th in the D.C. region, found their groove. And Carolina coach Roy Williams tried everything to get his team back on track. But G. Mason was on a mission, and the Sweet 16 had yet another Cinderella at the ball. The Patriots eliminate the defending NCAA champion North Carolina Tar Heels a 65-60 victory for George Mason. Get to your spots quickly, all right? Look over the top, fours when you take it out. You know, bypass that first line of defense real quick and look over the top and wings, you come back and meet the ball, play strong, be physical to get open, okay? It's gonna be a man's game tonight. Pressure no problem for Bradley. Franklin gets inside, has it blocked and picked up by Allen. Right now Memphis a little too long, a little too quick, a little too athletic for Bradley and it showed. After beating Kansas and Pittsburgh in the first two rounds, the stakes were a little higher for the Bradley Braves in the opening game of the Oakland Regional. The number one seeded Memphis Tigers were ready and waiting to squash Bradley's Cinderella plan. But the Braves came out smoking, literally, and hung right with the top seeded Tigers throughout the first half. Bradley on an 11-2 run inside oh. Carney, and he ends the run right there. The second half was all about the Tigers, and their transition game yielded numerous easy baskets. It was an impressive performance by the region's number one seed, and this Cinderella was sent home 80 to 64. It was a spectacular run by the Bradley Braves, who silenced their critics and earned a lot of well-deserved respect along the way. It was as improbable a matchup as the Sweet 16 has ever seen. Neither 11th seeded George Mason nor 7th seeded Wichita State were expected to make it this far. But after this regional semifinal, one of these teams will be a game away from the final four. 
George Mason seemed to get untracked early, hammering the ball into Will Thomas in the post. Wichita State's Paul Miller had some post moves of his own and answered back. And when Will Thomas wasn't scoring in the paint, he was kicking it out to his shooters. Jordan Carter hits the three. And soon after, Fowler and Campbell knocks down the triple to open up a 16-point halftime lead. The Shockers could get no closer than eight throughout the second half. And George Mason continues its dream run all the way to the Elite Eight, beating Wichita State 63-55. Who would have thought George Mason from the Colonial Athletic Association, 40 minutes from the final four. The LSU Tigers felt like they had nothing to lose in their Atlanta Regional Semifinal matchup against top-seeded Duke. Glenn Davis had his fourth-seeded Tigers playing the best basketball of the season. And Duke's J.J. Redick was as focused as ever. The Big Baby going coast to coast early in the game, giving LSU a two-point lead. J.J. Redick found his form early, but the senior All-America would go on to have one of his worst performances of the season. The teams traded baskets until late in the second half when Davis scored to increase the LSU lead to six. the right corner to the baseline, Davis driving reverse layup, no. Stick back jam, Tyrus Thomas. Daryl Mitchell added this three-pointer, and Duke would be the first number one seed to lose in this year's big dance. An unfitting end to a great career for Duke guard J.J. Redick, who will be remembered as one of the greatest scorers in the history of college basketball. LSU Tigers moved on to the Elite Eight, beating Duke 62-54. Atlanta's regional semifinal between the six-seeded West Virginia Mountaineers and the second-seeded Texas Longhorns will go down as one of the tournament's great games. The Longhorns jumped all over West Virginia and were up 39-27 at halftime. But as they have done all season, the Mountaineers began bearing threes. Kevin Pitsnoggle continued his hot shooting. And Mike Ganzi connected on one of 15 West Virginia triples. Trailing by three, it was Pitsnoggle again to tie it. Nine seconds, eight, seven, spins it out the Pitsnoggle. He'll shoot a three for the tie. It's good with five seconds to go. Longhorns inbound, four seconds, three. Here's Abrams dribbling through traffic. Out the Paulino, a three at the buzzer. It's good. It's good. The Longhorns have won. Texas is going to the Elite Eight. Kenton Paulino knocks it down at the buzzer. And Texas is a step away from the Final Four. Kenton Paulino's three-pointer stood as the game winner, and UT made it to the Elite Eight for the first time since 2003. The third-seeded Florida Gators made their way to the regional semis with relative ease, and the Gator bait in the Minneapolis regional is the six-seeded Georgetown Hoyas, who have enjoyed a resurgence of the once dominant program under John Thompson III. In what was a great game of two patient, defensive-minded teams, Georgetown struck first and held a slim lead into the second half. Undy do, yes, what a move. The two teams continued to battle, but the inside presence of Florida super sophomores, Joe Kim Noah. It's Noah, Noah banks it down and he's going to the line. And Al Horford seemed to tip the scales in their favor. Hibbert, he beats him, and that's Brewer. With a hand out, and going down and dunk it, look out. With under 30 seconds to play, it was yet another super soft. Corey Brewer, who became the hero for the Gators. Brewer with hands in there. Oh, show the basket. It was on to the final eight for the Fab Florida team. The Oakland Regional semifinal matchup between the two top teams on the West Coast this season didn't look like much of a game from its onset. 
The third seeded Gonzaga Bulldogs threatened to blow out the second seed UCLA Bruins. All America Adam Morrison and his boys led by as many as 17 in the first half. UCLA used its trademark defense to cut the lead to nine with under three minutes to play. And he claimed it, Bill Russell style, a foul out of the bucket. No, Omar Mute there for the tip in. Then things got crazy. They throw it to Morrison. He holds on. Well, you don't want to foul Morrison. You make him get it over half court. You know you got to foul. And oh. a steal! Farmer! Inside! The freshman up! Oh, and they go in front! Rivio! Last chance to dance! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Oh, what a game! Unbelievable! What a game! Unbelievable. UCLA! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Are you kidding me? After being down by 17, Heartbreak City! In the front court, Batista with the catch! And that's it! What a comeback! UCLA defeats Gonzaga 73-71 after being down by 17! The regional final in Oakland had the second seeded UCLA Bruins looking to recapture the March magic of the 1995 UCLA team that won the NCAA title. Top seeded Memphis thought this year was the year of the Tiger and their magical run this season would keep them going all the way to Indianapolis. This low scoring defensive minded game fit right into the UCLA game plan and the Pac-10 champs built an early lead and kept it for most of the game. Dribble to front court, drive the lane, kick it off to Lorenzo Mata for a dunk. Memphis had its moments but could never mount any sort of challenge to the athletic Bruins. Led by regional MVP Ryan Holland, UCLA applied the pressure to Memphis early and never let up. Off the dribble, baseline jump shot, got it. The magic continues for UCLA. They upset Memphis and head to the Final Four. And the Bruins are back in the Final Four for the 16th time, looking for national championship number 12. The Atlanta Regional Final between fourth seeded Louisiana State University and second seeded Texas was a matchup of some of the best young big men in the country, including the newest star of college basketball, Glenn Davis. With one second on the clock, he hits it. Big baby. Texas sophomore LaMarcus Aldridge staked claim early that he would be a force in this game, as did LSU's Tyrus Thomas. There's that high lob, and guess who's on the receiving end? Tyrus Thomas. It was LSU's defense that turned the tide at the end of the first half. It's picked off by Daryl Mitchell. Gibson trails, and the senior steals two right at the buzzer. It's tied at 26. With 30 seconds left, LSU held a slim three-point lead. And after this mad scramble, Texas guard Daniel Gibson hit the three to tie the game. Polino blocked from behind. Gibson ties oh. it up. What a sequence. My, oh, my. And in the extra session, it was none other than the regional MVP, Davis, who put the Baby Tigers out in front for good with his only three-pointer of the tournament. LSU began the season helping out in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. It was only fitting that Big Baby and the boys from Baton Rouge got to celebrate Mardi Gras style. And get ready, Indianapolis. Big Baby and Brady's Bunch are coming to the Final Four. I've got to say something. Big Baby got to say something. Yeah! You know, these group of guys back here, we some warriors, we some soldiers, and we're not done yet. We got tapeworms in our belly, man. We got tapeworms in our belly, and it ain't over, all right? So I want to thank the fans just for New Orleans, Katrina, everybody, I don't care, we doing it big, let's go, let's do it. Russia, 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 Russia. The Florida Gators were ready to take a bite out of a number one seed as they faced top seed of Villanova in the Minneapolis Regional Final. Villanova had it going early from the outside. 
But just as it had all tournament long, Florida's big men were just as dominant inside the post. He dunks it down. He's off to a monster start. The Gator defense also stepped up to the challenge and was able to convert many fast break chances. Nope, he's going to drive in instead and score. Florida coach Billy Donovan was looking to lead his Gator squad to his second Final Four in five years. Randy Foy did everything in his power to keep his top seeded team in this one. But tonight, the Wildcats were nothing but Gator bait, and the youngsters from Gainesville sent home a top seed. Sophomore Joe Kim Noah finished with 21 points, 15 rebounds, and five block shots to snag regional MVP. Wow. Well, there you have it. The Gators are going to the Final Four. Showtime is right for the David and Goliath sized matchup between the top seeded Yukon Huskies and the 11th seeded Cinderella Patriots of George Mason University, who knocked out Michigan State, North Carolina, and Wichita State to get to the final eight. Yukon played as if it wanted to put the Cinderella dreams to rest once and for all. But as they have done all tournament long, the gritty Patriots answered them right back. This basket put the Patriots up by four late in the game. Could the Cinderella dream actually come true? A missed free throw gave UConn a chance to win it with a three. Wings across the timeline, left side, Denim Brown, dribble drive along the baseline, lay it up, and it goes! It goes! We're tied at 74! Oh my goodness! In the extra frame, Mason came out firing on all cylinders, but this missed free throw almost did them in again and left the door open for UConn to win it with a three. Here comes Brown, dribble drive across the lane. Timeline, left side, launches, back rim, no good! And in one of the unlikeliest upsets in the history of college basketball, George Mason, a team no one thought would even be in the tournament, has knocked out the number one team, Connecticut, by the count of 86-84 to go to the Final Four. It has been an unbelievable, unprecedented, and unpredictable run for George Mason. Coach Jim Laranega and his Cinderella team to end all Cinderella teams are going to the Final Four in Indianapolis. The Final Four is now set, and for the first time since 1980, no number one seed has advanced past the regional final. It has been an unusual road to Indianapolis. And for these four surviving teams, they have finished what could be the toughest test in sports. And their dreams of a national championship are still very much alive. The RCA Dome will be hosting the Final Four for the fourth time. And there is no better setting for college basketball's greatest weekend than in the hoop-crazed Hoosier state of Indiana. The Patriots from George Mason arrived in Indianapolis still coming to grips with their newfound status among college basketball's elite, prepping for a semifinal date with Florida. There is no place on earth I would rather be than be here with you guys. We are in game mode. Let's go. It's absolutely surreal. I, I mean, I can't imagine uh, being a spectator watching a team like our George Mason team go through this run. Uh, I know a lot of people did not expect us to be in the tournament at all. A lot of people want to see the underdog win, and right now we're the, we're the underdog. We felt we were good all along, but uh, it's definitely amazing, I mean, the run that we made, but we're not done yet. You know, we have a game against Florida, and our goal right now is to beat them. I really like the makeup of our team 
in, in terms of the intangible things, the unselfishness, their work ethic, their enthusiasm for playing, their love for one another. Let's go, baby. This is what you work for. This is what you work for. All the, the tears and the sweat. It's all to be, to play in moments like this. Let's go, baby. I'm just ready to play, you know. We're going through all the media stuff right now, and you know, it's great. And it's a lot of hype going on, but it's just time to get out there and strap it on and play basketball. The young Gators starting five arrived in Indianapolis with surprising chemistry and confidence, rolling to four tournament victories by an average of 16 points a game. the shot clock has to put one up over green and he cans it while George Mason set the early pace off the foot of Campbell Humphrey stops plants shoots gets it this time from three Florida quickly responded and built a 10-point lead pointing with one hand dribbling with his left now he's gonna fire a three and knock it down oh what a shot by Torian Green Horford John Lewis trying to defend foul on Lewis basket goes and one Rebound by George Mason. They rumble by midcourt with a three on two. It's a pass to Skin on the wing from Butler. His layup is good, and it's a foul. Nine first half points from Tony Skin, key to George Mason's surge, and set the Gators into the break, up by only five. While George Mason delivered a few answers in the first half, it had no response for Lee Humphrey to start the second half. Cross court, left corner, Humphrey launching a three, nails it. He kicks it above the arc to Humphrey. Another three. Bullseye! Ooh, two daggers early on a kick out. Great ball distribution. A quick timeout by George Mason. Two quick threes from Humphrey pushed the Florida lead to 11. But the man they call Humpty was just warming up. Green to Horford to Humphrey. A screen by Horford. A three by Humphrey is up and in. He's knocked down three to begin the second half. And the Gators lead with their largest margin of 12 tonight. Humphrey's hot start opened up the inside for Noah. Noah at the other end, and yes, there it is. George Mason battled to the end, trying to dig in to the Florida lead. Bouncing outside the lane for Lewis. Hooks a pass inside, caught by Thomas, who slams the rim and shakes it hard. But the quickness and balance of the Florida offense proved too much for the Patriots. Who throws a pass mid-court on the baseline to Brewer, drives and jams up high and down hard. <laughs> Send it in. 53-36 with 10 and a half to play in the second half. Noah weaving, doubled up by the two big guys. Humphrey with another three, and what a half. And what then, a half. Here's a three on the inbound. It's good by Brewer. There's your dagger. 40 seconds to play. The Gators are going to play for the national championship on Monday. And as the clock wound down, so too did one of the great Cinderella runs in tournament history. It's Florida's turn, and they're heading to the final. the Super Bowl, I think March Madness, and especially this stage at the Final Four level, is the, the biggest thing in sports. We set three goals for ourselves this year, uh, to win our conference tournament, to win our conference outright, and uh, to make it to the Final Four and now win a national championship, hopefully. They've done a great job of staying focused all year. They're very, very focused right now. Our practices have been outstanding. And it just makes it so much sweeter to be at a school like UCLA and be at this level because it is expected and for us to work so hard and to see it pays off, uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling. This has been great for me and uh, I appreciate the way our players have played and how they've approached it 
and, and how hopefully they'll continue to approach it for a couple more days. I guess everybody wants to be in the Final Four, but you got to realize, to me, and I and that entire team, just being in the Final Four isn't enough. It's a wonderful feeling to be here. And just, you know, dreams do come true. Hey! 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 Let's go, man. Let's go. Hey! Let's go. Hey! Hey! hey. It's on the Welcome to today's second national semifinal game between the champions of the Atlanta Regional, the LSU Fighting Tigers, and the champions of the Oakland Regional, the UCLA Bruins. Legends in the building tonight. You saw earlier Kareem and all his championships for the Bruins. Bill Russell won a couple at San Francisco. And look at this, Eli and Peyton Manning. The Bruins. Two wins away from a 12th national title. The flash bulbs are going off. The toss, the tap, and we're underway. Jordan Farmar, hot early from the outside for UCLA. Who feeds outside the lane to Hollins. Now a pass above the arc. It goes to Farmar, who nails a three in front of the LSU bench. But big baby Glenn Davis, the answer down low for LSU. Mitchell, big baby off the glass, and he's on the board. Defense drove UCLA to the Final Four, and the Bruins had it working again against the Tigers. His pass at midcourt is picked off. Abamute tries and jams. He took off at the free throw line, skied and fell and jammed it down, and this place is going crazy. The Bruins jump off to their biggest lead tonight. Here's Tansman Mitchell throwing outside the lane. It's caught by Tyrus Thomas. He shuffles in the paint. He spins on Hollins. His layup is good in the lane underneath and a foul. Here's Farmer, a three atop the circle. Good, he nails it from 22 feet away for UCLA. Here comes Collison by midcourt through the circle, down the lane. His layup is in for the Bruins. Unabashed. Challenges people at the rim. The quick timeout now by LSU. But Solid D has set the tone for this game. They have taken it to LSU. Former Bruin legend Reggie Miller pleased with UCLA's 15-point halftime lead. And thanks to freshman Luke Richard Mba Amute, the Bruin Express continued to churn into the second half. Pass down the lane, caught by Mbamute with the two-handed jam for UCLA. Farmer between the circles, gets a screen, left of the key, bouncing down the lane. Mbamute catches and jams! What a play with a great Farmer pass. As the lead swelled to 20, Farmer continued to spread it around. Farmar now changes the offensive play, lobbing on the sideline for Bozeman, who throws back in the middle for Farmar. Oh, who runs down the lane. It's an alley for Hollins. Catches it and comes down hard. What a great play. Beats left sideline, caught by a follow, who beats to a Farmar atop the key. Oh. Up shot good. Right between the eyes. Farmar from 25. Unbelievable. It's going their way. UCLA leads at 48-27 with 15.52 to play. The UCLA defense held the Tigers 20 points below their tournament average and to just 32% from the floor. Feeds now down the lane, caught by a Flalo, drives, layup good for UCLA. Well, they use, use the clock, right? Decision. Everything, Decision. perfect. 57-35, the Bruins lead it. It's looking more and more like Florida and UCLA will meet for the national championship on Monday. Fifty-nine, forty-five, the final. The Bruins dominated from tip to buzzer. One step closer and one win away from their 12th national title. Love you, Dad. Love you, too. East meets West in America's heartland, in Hoosier land, inside the RCA Dome. Defense, <laughs> the key to every game for us is defense. Um, as long as five guys are playing together all at the same time, 
and really giving themselves up for each other, and we'll be okay. That's why I wanted to take the UCLA job, because I think uh, the opportunity to win uh, the national championship is best at UCLA more than anywhere else. Tonight, let's get it done. Show them how we win. Really this is time, y'all. Let's go. This is it. Come on, y'all. Family of three, y'all. One, two, three. Family. We really don't have to say nothing at this point. Uh, you know, we know what it takes to win. Uh, we know what we're playing for. I don't know, it would, it would mean a lot. It would be uh, show a lot of hard work paid off. We gotta get good shots. And I don't know how those shots are gonna come. It's gotta be through ball movement and player movement. The ball's gotta go inside, it's gotta come back out. UCLA does a great job doubling the low post. Uh, they do a good job and have good quickness uh, on the perimeter. They have depth. I've been dreaming about this moment since I was a little kid. And now it's finally here. But at the same time, um, I can't look at it like that. I have to really seize the moment. And at the end of the day, it's, it's playing basketball. It's something that I've been doing since I was seven years old. And we, we love it. We all love it. We arrived at championship night with a matchup few had predicted, yet in hindsight, made all the sense in the world. The basketball team from the so-called football school. Number 13, Joe Kim Noah. Up against Ben Howland's team, and John Wooden's legacy. Number one, Jordan Farmar. More than 43,000 on hand and millions more at home, waiting for the final tip of the 2006 men's basketball season. One game to decide it all. Man-to-man -man defense comes green, curls up the baseline, feeds in the paint, caught by Brewer, spinning fadeaway jump shot beneath the circle, in the lane is in. Here's Green, dribble drive in the left wing, stops in the arc, jump shot good from 20 in front of the UCLA bench. He nails a two-point right-handed jump shot, timeout UCLA, and Florida has jumped out to a five-point lead. In a feeling, there goes Long, Humphrey doesn't see the passes going over his head. And Farmar uses the body to shield him and lays it in. I got in foul trouble. Moss came in and stepped up big for us in the first half. Right-handed 15-foot jump shot, no. It's a Florida rebound. Moss has it. His layup is in right in front of the basket. Here's a handoff now to Mbamute atop the key. Feeds outside the circle. It's caught by Farmar. Dribbles to the baseline. Boxing the ball. Down the lane in the jam for UCLA. Florida 15-10 over UCLA. What a block. That was Horford. Pitches it up ahead. Brewer. Brewer fouled on the way up. He got the shot down. Jim, that was just a great, great pass. Hands off there to Hodge. Hodge now twisting and turning by the defense of Florida's Farmar. A sideline pass to Humphrey. A jump shot. Good. He hits a three. And he was fouled by Bozeman of the Bruins. So he'll be at the line. And the Gators have their biggest lead of nine. It's Brewer atop the key. He had it taken away. Farmer ripped it out of his hands. UCLA the other way. Farmer takes it and drives down the lane with the layup. 25-17. The Gators are on top. He lobs a pass right of the lane, caught by Noah. A leaping one-hand catch. Nice. He dribbles inside the paint. He throws underneath. It's caught by Moss. His Gator layup is in. That takes us to halftime. And then walking off the floor, Joe Kim Noah moving his arms up and down like a big old alligator. Good nice job. Here. The Gator job. We are at halftime. It's 36-25. The Florida Gators lead by 11. The biggest thing I tried to stress to get across to our guys is that it was a 40-minute game, and although we were up by 11 and we did a good job, we needed to stay focused. We needed to continue to attack. Here come the Gators the other way. Green by midcourt. Humphrey at three, left sideline. Go! Is that big? You weren't ready defensively. We tell him he sees a crack. He's let it go. He let it go. Between the leg dribble, dribbling knee high. Accelerates to the left side, stops on the arc. Feeds it top the key, Humphrey with a three. Good! Oh, it's a replay of Saturday night. He's knocked down two consecutive threes. And Florida's got their biggest lead, 42-25. Corey knocked down a big three as well. And anytime you can knock down consecutive threes like that, it's, it's tough because that, that's a lot of points. Brewer, he puts it up for three. And the Gators are on fire. 
I told Joe at halftime, I was like, you got to finish strong. No matter what you do, just go dunk the ball every time. And, you know, he did that. Noah dribbling through the circle, down the lane, in the middle of the jam! A high, down, hard, with a tomahawk that rattles the rim! As a player, you know, you know who stepped up. And, um, and tonight, everybody stepped up. Here come the Gators, it's Troy and Green with the left hand dribble, bouncing left of the lane, caught by Horford, back to the basket, double team, leads and throws out of that, Burns and Richard with the slam dunk! On the oh, oh, they hit oh. Boya, perfect pass, Collison to a Boya for the dunk. You know, one of the things that we talked about doing was trying to attack in the alley, trying to attack directly towards the rim. Now he looks back down at the action, takes it by midcourt, a left hand dribble, oh. a bounce pass, down the lane, it's caught by Noah! He floats and jams with the right-handed Tomahawk. 55-35, Florida on top by 20. Yeah, that really set the tone. Of, we, we did a good job breaking down the defense the rest of the game. Knee-high dribble. Feeds in the circle to Humphrey. Bounces down the lane. Caught by Horton in the jam. Bodies clear with no regard for human life. We're up 15, 16 points with three minutes left. I was still on edge. UCLA rebound, a follow, three on two, a follow, triple drive through the circle, down the lane, layup is up and in for UCLA. What a will to go to the rim, he just split two defenders. 12 point game, three at the other end for Florida, bouncing down the lane, caught by Horford, another two-handed dunk. It goes to Noah, who's going to bounce pass down the lane to Humphrey. Humphrey now dribbles outside the lane, spins a three, good, in front of his own bench. He now feeds the Humphrey underneath to Noah and the champ. Oh, that's the dagger. That's the dagger for Florida. And the national championship is going to go to Gainesville. What a performance. The Gators as good as it gets. Florida's the national champion. It was the first ever NCAA basketball championship for the University of Florida Gators as they clamped down on the UCLA Bruins to win their 33rd game of the season. It's a great feeling. Hey. Uh, it's hard to describe. <laughs> you feel like you're in a cloud. Like you can't feel your legs. Uh, it smells good. It tastes good. Throughout the championship game and the entire NCAA tournament, the Gators put on a display of tremendous versatility, unselfishness, and patience. Trademarks of Billy Donovan's team all season long. Everything we did, we could finally say we're the national champion. The Final Four's most outstanding player, Joe Kim Noah, dominated the final with 16 points, nine rebounds, and a championship game record, six blocked shots. The Florida Gators chomped their way to their first ever national championship by playing the near perfect game at the perfect time. This is what it's all about. All the hard work, it's about this moment right now. This is what we worked for, this right here. It's an unbelievable feeling uh, just to have my family, everybody here. And it's a dream come true for me, and, I, and I'm just so excited that we did this. To stand up there and cut down that net, it's for a lot of people. Uh, it's, for this, it's for our players, it's for our administration, it's for our coaches. It's for all the people that play a major role in providing an opportunity for all of us to do what we did uh, tonight. It just feels good to be a national champion right now. Congratulations to the University of Florida the 2006 Men's NCAA Division I Basketball Champions. What a glorious time to be a Gator. I was ready to go, go. I was ready to...